Hello my soccer universe, it's now time to talk about what happened yesterday evening in the Europa and the Europa Conference League uh, and I also will add a little bit once the draw is done a little bit of that uh, to the videos as well but for now we're talking results yesterday it was actually you know when you watch it flipping back and forth and again I only saw the Europa League fixtures but I followed actually the Conference League fixtures uh, a little bit uh, on a ticker because I w uh, there was also quite some stuff happening. Uh, it's actually quite exciting. Uh, yes, not as many goals scored, especially in the conference league, although I think this second round uh, made up for a lot of the trust that was happening in the first one. And I want to start this video in the conference league uh, with the first match also already going to penalties. Anderlecht against Ludo Goretz. Uh, it was an own goal that gave Anderlecht the lead. Then they had even a 2 nil lead through Ferskaren uh, in the 6 8 But a little bit later, uh, Thiago could equalize on ag aggregate. Away goal rules, of course, doesn't count anymore which actually would have seen Ludogorets through. Ludogorets in overtime had then a uh, Pietrowski sent off and then they missed all the penalties, although going first and Anderlecht go through. So a traditional big team from Belgium making it through. Uh, Lazio hang on to their uh, narrow lead with a nil-nil at Cluj. So another Italian team through. And that is the worst result of an Italian team this entire week. Or well, this entire two weeks. No, this entire week. Let's put it that way. Uh, Dnipro also kind of break down Larnaca so with a few nil nils. Partizan against Sheriff was an interesting game because uh, Partizan took an early lead, but then was uh, this, this was equalized by Sheriff uh, midway through the first half by, by penalty. And Diop just before and just after the half sends the game towards Sheriff, uh, which, yeah. I personally wanted Partizan to move on, but you know, so uh, be it. And we have Sheriff Tirupol moving on. Then Basel had quite some luck in Straps as well. Yes, they got an early lead through uh, Amduni. However, Basagetas misses a penalty, then an own goal. Uh, um, and a goal for um, that would be the equalist for Travis, but it wasn't an it was an offside goal, uh, was chalked off and then Sekiri makes it 2-0. So uh, quite some uh, luck for Basel, who are not doing well in the Swiss League, but they're moving on into the next round. Braga got to Florence on the back of a 4-0 um, deficit. But they made it for a while a game. Castro in there gave, it, gave them a lead. Uh, Diallo doubled it in the 34th, but then shortly they have a Mandragora uh, pulls one back for Fiorentina. And I think at that point, Braga knew that they're not come, come, come back. And Saponara adds two more. And the Cabral goal, uh, that would have been the equalizer, the first equalizer, if you like, um, got chalked, chalked, chalked off. So then in, in the end, um, Fiorentina turned and around, but for a second there, maybe the real uh, upset was in there. But again, an Italian team winning. Uh, we have Ghent uh, beating Karabakh, uh, also then on penalties, and Lech Poznan aus Bode glimpt. There's no second glimpt miracle happening this time around. And so with these results, we have that... Um, just looking at the favorites, we we'll look at the draw then uh, shortly after, just, uh, just before the draw, we had that West Ham, Villarreal uh, and Lazio now in third place and then Fiorentina right behind and Nice and AZ kind of hanging below there. But you see it was quite the eclectic field because there's still Ghent, Bajakshi, Anderlecht, Poznan, Sheriff, Jurgardens, Basel, Larnaca, Sivaspor and Slovan Bratislava in there. So quite the eclectic field over. Okay, and let's look at the draw for uh, the Europa Conference League round of 16. I give you here the pots. We see the seeded teams up there and below the ones that made it to the round of 16. Uh, and we saw it was a completely free draw. There were not any restrictions, which I think is quite exciting. And we got the following pairings out of that. Uh, as we'll see, if they favorites West Ham will play Larnaca, Sivasburg against Fiorentina. Fiorentina uh, getting definitely the biggest boost through the draw. We also we have the big one between AZ and Lazio. That's basically uh, two uh, co-favorites as we have seen. Uh, so both of them will not be very happy. We have Dürgardens against Lech Poznan, which should be 
be relative. He is probably a not so glamour tire as is Slobart against Basel. Basel also relatively happy with their uh, draw there. Then we have Nice against Sheriff. Uh, will this be another exit for a French team? We gotta see. Villarreal against Anderlecht. Clearly the yellow submarine will be favored there, but Anderlecht don't overlook them. And then Bajakshi here against Ghent, the another uh, with the Belgium team in there and having that we see now the changes in the favorites we had actually we have actually quite a few movements here we see West Ham are still up top but Fiorentina now moved all the way up in second spot mainly because Azet and Lazio are playing each other uh, but also Villarreal not having uh, such an easy opponent um, as they could have expected in Anderlecht so uh, therefore Fiorentina definitely mo moving up because he was a very uh, a good opponent for them. Nice and Lazio um, around out the top five and then it's AZ and there's not much change except for uh, the bottom there's a few changes. But uh, when we look at the, fav the favorites at the moment it's Western Fiorentina, Villarreal, Nice and Lazio who should be considered the favorites. Moving on in the Europa League, uh, Amit Yula cannot complete the miracle. Remember that in the first game, Sporting equalized deep in the stoppage time at game that they had completely um, dominated. This time Kvartes again gets the goal, puts Sporting ahead and then Paulinho is sent off for two fouls rather idiotically within short uh, success occasion. So Pichella just, just with what they have. Once Pedro Gonzalez makes it 2-0, uh, it was always going to be go Sporting Wells. He, uh, he doubles up. And then one of the most ridiculous own goals that you will ever see uh, when Gartenmann wants to play it back to the keeper. The problem is that the keeper uh, rolls it back to the keeper. The problem is that the keeper is not on the goal and he hits right the goal. And you, you see him, the Sporting player saying, come on, guy. Uh, we are, we are sorry, we, we feel bad for, enough for you. So, yeah. Um, the best game probably of the entire evening was Monaco against Bayer Leverkusen and I'm varying Leverkusen who have been doing really, 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 really well. Uh, they get the lead, thus equalizing the overall score. And Wissam Benjeda gets a penalty penalty. However, Palacios shortly thereafter gives Leverkusen again the lead. So it's all level again. Uh, and then it took another roller coaster, right? Because uh, Wirtz with a great cross uh, gets it to Adli, uh, who gives Leverkusen the overall lead and for a long time it seems like Leverkusen can hang on. However, Monaco really got the cavalry out. Um, brought on, for instance, Ben Yo, uh, M Mbolo for Ben Yedda, which I think hurt them in, in, in the end. But Mbolo at first finds the equalizer and then in the 84th and then Monaco were, were, were pressing to even get the winner. I even thought that they had the better uh, of the game in the second half but this was a very much very evenly match between two teams that like going forward and it ends in penalties and Bayer Leverkusen does not miss whereas the second penalty by Matazo is put expertly on the crossbar and so Bayer Leverkusen move on and a theme for French teams started forming in this round. I've now mentioned the Italian teams have been doing well. French teams had a horrid one, especially not against Juve. With so much hope, you go, you have a full stasis stadium. It was brilliant at atmosphere. Then Fajoli plays it into Di Maria in the fifth minute, who just from far out curls it with a brilliant shot into the net, 1-0 Juve. Not all lost, however, then uh, Palois saves with his hand or basically with the elbow uh, a goal it's a penalty he is sent off of course Di Maria steps up gets a second one there was no way coming back for not from that one and then Di Maria is his even adds a third and he was the man of the evening Di Maria lifting the old lady uh, was quite the sight and I have had to say it was overall a very atmospheric stadium unfortunately it did not live up and while I said uh, French teams had a horrid, horrid evening the atmosphere in French stadiums was actually really 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 good PSV against Sevilla it sounds tight 
However, PSV woke up way too late. De Jong getting the first goal in the 77th at a point where everything kind of fizzled out. Um, he actually scores and won quickly thereafter, but it was a clear off offside. And then the Tutor Tunnel came only the 95th minute, then even a red card uh, later than that. But there was no real comeback. Sevilla looked safe overall. Um, Roma lost at Salzburg, you know, one happy side one sad side because that's the last austrian team being being out but you know salsa salsburg is never a bad thing uh roma did it the Mourinho way really frustrating salsburg salsburg just being typically too nice all over and roma bring it all bring a little bit uh emotion in in, in it contesting every little thing and just getting Sal salsburg off their game and then if you spin it solo on the outside and uh, with uh, the nice crosses they get and salsburg not not being able to do that like they couldn't hold milan away from they couldn't hold roma as as well first it's Belotti uh with a contortion of the body that heads uh in the fur for first one then a, a brilliant move uh where Dybala makes it 2-0 uh just before the half and then Roma just played it home the I want to say the Italian way but I think it's more correct to say the Mourinho way the big one between United and Barcelona um I think Barcelona let let United back into the game by being a little a little bit sloppy. I mean, you had the lead through a Lewandowski penalty uh, in, in a game that was rather even, but did not quite live up to what uh, the first leg promised. Yes, there was no Gavi, there was no Pedri, so that definitely takes it already down a notch. Um, and in the end, it's then Fred uh, that gets the equalizer uh, right after half, and Anthony uh, then gets the winner for United. Uh, kind of impressive uh, for them to oust Barcelona, who and I have now can now focus fully on the league. However, I didn't man mention it. Yes, there is also some major controversy um, surrounding the club, namely, you know, having paid off seemingly at least one at the head of the refereeing committee, which is not a good look overall, but you know, there's maybe not time for this video. I actually was more enamored with a start Ren against Schachter Donetsk. Uh, Ren again, Brilliant at atmosphere, rocker stays is, is, is the stadium. And you know, I can even feel with Ren fans a little bit because you know, on the on the ones we all support Ukraine in a way, but then you wanna win and there was a lot of energy in there in this game and um of this type as well. Um Ren came out flying, however the first goal uh came for Schachter, but then there was kind of, there was a handball. It was a, it was a weird one. I, I thought you could probably even let have let that go and it took Ren a while to get going. Schachter was definitely well in that game as, as well. They could level it then, uh, um, were dangerous, even more dangerous themselves. But um, just after the half, Toko Ekampi, after brilliant uh, Guiri assist, uh, makes it 1-0 for Ren. And then again, it was an up and down game, really intense, um, that went to overtime. And once Doku assisted Salah in the 106th minute, so just after the restart of the second half of overtime, it really seemed like that Ren are going through. Uh, they had the game squarely under control until a freak on goal. I mean, it was um, it was a shot that Belochan, uh, 18 year, year, he had to get there, Galgazi foot in and lobs it over the keeper. If he lets that, 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 that go, he probably uh, gives away a pretty good equalizing chance for Schachter. So it's not on him, but he was inconsolable overall. It goes to penalties, although Ren, both of them tried to win it. And this was one of the most remarkable penalty shooters. And again, uh, emotion actually, I think, lost it for Ren. They missed the second and the end and the third. And... Um, Schachter had a 3-1 lead after three penalties with two match points. Guiri needs to convert, does it. Then Bonda misses. Tight needs to convert, does this brilliantly. It is level and then Sikhan steps up, puts it on the crossbar. It was just unbelievable. And then, I think then it's the second... Uh, um, uh, after that, or um, after the second, when Conor Plea uh, converted, there was some emotion come, come, coming. Because suddenly, the teams were not happy because all the uh, Schachter players were kind of making these uh, these chests because they were whistled really, really, really loudly. And in that, they reveled. And the Ren players didn't like it. 
And Oguchuku sees his penalty saved, the third penalty saved, and Kole then con uh, con converts and sends Ren home in their own stadium. I'm serious. If they would have let it go, I would have concentrated the task at hand. Ren may have won this penalty shooter. I think this is emotional scuffle undid them. Emotion was also between Union Berlin and Ajax, where it is really unbelievable to say for me, Union were the better team. Uh, the Knoche gives them a lead through a pen penalty. Yes, the Bessi handball was a little bit an odd one. Um, and then just before the, at the half, Juranovic, when Ajax tried to gag and you can make, make it 2-0. Right after have Kudus pulls one back. And just when he thought that Ajax could do something three minutes later, Turkey. And it's 3-1. And from there on, Union are cruising into the next round and are truly the sensation of Europe at the moment. And so, again, before the draw, here is how it was with the favorites. We had Arsenal United with Barcelona out. Arsenal United now the top favorites with Juve and Roma right behind. Never overlook Sevilla, but I also want to say never overlook Union Berlin. Uh, they will be a team that no one wants to play for sure. But again, it's a wide-ranging mix. I also think that Feyenoord uh, is probably a little bit overlooked in there as well. Uh, the outsiders, of course, are Union Saint-Julien, although they uh, already faced Union Berlin in the first round and did quite well against uh, them. Fenerbahce, uh, Schachter, Ferenc Varos, yeah, those are kind of the outsiders. I would say Sporting is in there as well. Before we look at the draw, a uh, quick apology to United fans. You had this big win over Barcelona and then uh, you didn't make the wall. For some reason, I forgot, uh, forgot it in the list there. So I decided to wear United. We have here the pots for the draw, like we did for the Europa League. We see the, on top the four, uh, uh, the, four the eight seeded teams. Uh, that were waiting for their opponents and then quite an eclectic uh, unseeded pot with United, Juve, Sevilla and Roma in there. They have definitely some big teams and there were also a few restrictions. Of course, Arsenal and United could not play each other as could uh, Sevilla could not meet Betis or Real Sociedad and Freiburg, of course, could not meet Leverkusen or Union Berlin. And so, with that, we have the following pairings that we got. We got another uh, duel of the unions that we already had in the group stage, which ended in two 1 0 away wins. So, that will be an interesting one. Of course, Union Berlin should be considered a big favorite in there. Sevilla will face Fenerbahce. Um, I guess they will overall be pleased with that uh, draw on the other side. I gotta say, Fenerbahce um, is not a team to be overlooked, honestly. So uh, it will be an interesting one. Freiburg against Juve. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm ju I don't know why I'm thinking about Vincenzo Grifo on that one. Uh, but that is definitely a glamour um, draw for Freiburg in the first uh, big foray into Europe. Uh, Leverkusen got a relatively uh, pleasant draw with Ferenc Varos. Arsenal have to play against Sporting. I remember that a few years ago it was relatively easy for Arsenal. Betis against United. Um, you would definitely favor United there, especially the way Betis have been. But remember, Real Sociedad, who are better than Betis, gave some trouble to United. Speaking of Real Sociedad, they have to go Roma. And as we will see, Roma at the slightest of favorites but i actually think real sociedad could uh get uh take this one and then we have feynord against schachter donetsk um another interesting one i think it's a tough opponent for feynord we saw how they um had some trouble they gave Ren trouble and i think they will also give feynord quite some trouble and let's look at the overall changes in the favorites there uh the top three it is remains arsenal united juve Union Berlin moving up as to Sevilla, Roma and Real Sociedad falling because they're facing each other and that's not a happy draw. <laughs> yeah, de definitely. Uh, if we look at favorite, it is really hard to look past the two English teams uh, with Juve and Union Berlin and you know Sevilla. Then it gets a little, a little bit tight, but the English teams are definitely a step above. The question is how serious do they take this comp competition? I'm looking here more at Arsenal than at United because um, Arsenal will probably go a little bit more for the Premier League. 
that was it from me from the recap from uh, the Europa League and the Europa Conference League. All these ties will be played while the second legs for the Champions League round of 16 are happening. Uh, will be again a tight program. I'm very much looking forward. Um, from one side, I'm excited. All Italian teams are through. I'm a little bit shocked that no league 1 team made it, except for Nice, who were already qualified for that round. So rather interesting. Also, a uh, note that Spanish teams, yes, we have in the Europa League, we have three Spanish uh, teams still left, and there's Villarreal also hanging around. But Spanish teams are not doing all that well with Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, arguably the second and third best team already out. So very interesting European week. Also the Dutch guys, well, let's, uh, I'm not doing all that well. In any case, I would like to hear your perspective. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.